Jay here from Stratford Paddock, this is Paddock Live, and joining me, it's old school time, it's Mr Gaz Drinkwater from the Full Time Devils days, how are we brother? When you say old school, yeah. it makes me feel old. Well, I, it's weird because you're not old, but I still forget that you, you are a grown-up. I'm not young though, am I? <laughs> I'm not young, I'm nearly 30. I, know I still think of that drunken kid outside Wembley, losing his mind when Andy Tate walked past. The, the worst you know thing I mean? is, is when the years I've grown up, but mentally, I'm... <laughs> I'm still like it. Happens to the best of us, I'm bro. It like does. Um, I feel like we're, um, you know, in the presence of greatness here, actually, bro. What? Because, <laughs> do you know what, right? The three most spoke about people a couple of weeks ago um, were uh, Ahmad Diallo, yeah. <laughs> um, Eric Sanag, and Gaz Drinkwater. Weird. Because after the uh, Liverpool game, which was one of the best games ever. It was it my favourite game of football I've ever seen. It was. Yeah. It was It was unbelievable. And it was mad because I was chatting to McCall about it on the Monday. And he was fuming because he didn't go. And it's like he goes every game at Old Trafford. He missed that one because he had to uh, do, I think he was doing the club. Um, and he's like, I was raging because I missed it. And he mm. said, like, I saw you guys chatting about it and how everyone was buzzing. But it just had everything, didn't it? And obviously you, your commentary on the Diallo goal summed it up beautifully oh, as well, thanks, didn't it? Mate. Because, no, yeah, because I was, I've asked you this before, but when you're commentating, how hard is it not to just act like a proper United fan? Well, because obviously I'm commentating for Radio Manchester, I'm allowed to be a little bit. Right. Obviously not, you know, not too far, you don't want to be unprofessional, yeah. but like, the difficulty is when you're doing the derby, because that's when you've got to be down the middle, that yeah. is hard, that. And I bloody hate City. Yeah. But, uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, the Liverpool game, mate, I was allowed to, I mean, in that scenario as well, you've got to lose your head. But the thing is about that is why, why it was just such a buzz, was because... At Radio Manchester, we don't have the rights to do commentary of Premier League games. Right. So we just do updates. So I, I do the updates yeah, for them. Yeah. But then when it's the FA Cup, BBC have the rights. So I did the full game. Yeah. And mate, by the end of it, my voice was just shattered. So good, bro. Honestly, it was, I was buzzing for you. I was glad you was getting a lot of credit for it because it summed it up beautifully. And I've watched that goal with your comments oh, About, I'm not exaggerating, about... 200 times because I was Thank just watching it on repeat. It was just, fuck, it was just great. It really the, was. The ironic thing about it is it wasn't even good commentary. <laughs> it was, uh, it's ra it's radio commentary. You can't see it. I should be telling you where the ball is, how he's put it in, but I was just like, nah, sod it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember once, it's not the same, but I remember once being in the press box for the um, FA Cup final against Crystal Palace. Mm. I was there with Keanu Free. We didn't have to do commentary. I just had to do some post-match and pre-match stuff. And when... Um, when Matt scored, I kept it together. I was just like, doing a few days and whatever. And then when Lingard scored, I lost it, bro. And I was just like, went into full fan mode because it's just so hard in it in that moment when it's such a big goal and a great game like that as well, just to not, not lose it completely. And you did well to so not swear. <laughs> and honestly, mate, after I'd finished, after I'd read, read the score and Calvin Andrew was with me, well, after he's like summarising what actually happened, I'm literally stood up punching the air, mate. <laughs> I'm stood up in the press box, surrounded by like five live journalists, proper yeah, journalists. Yeah. I'm punching the air. Yeah. I'm not bothered in that, a scenario nah, like it's that. Right, that's what it's what the way it should be. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I think that adds to it. You know, if you're a fan, and like, you, you're right as well, because fair enough if it was a derby and you've got OTT yeah. on on his United fan. I understand why City fans have been moaning about that. But it's United versus Liverpool. It's Radio Manchester. I mean, it's tailor made for a Mancunian United fan to be absolutely buzzing when we get a late, late winner like that. And the way we got it as well. It was it was so good, honestly. Thanks. Mate. Thanks. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be watching that on repeat after Sunday's beating by the Scousers. Yeah, we're getting smacked. <laughs> we're getting smacked. Uh, loads of people in the comments and the chat already. Also, um, David Briscoe has gifted a paddock membership. Thanks, Dave. You've done this a few times lately. Uh, thanks uh, a lot because we really appreciate all the support we get. Extra content on the member section as well. Uh, Guns Gucci Sensi says, "Am I going to see you all in South Carolina?" Yes, I'm going to South Carolina. You, yeah. you, yes, we're gonna we're gonna be over there for the um, preseason tour. Oh, man. Yes, so we'll be over there. Um, done a couple of tours with Paddock, and it's been really good stuff. And looking forward to being over there. Went to America last year, and the American United fans are nuts. I've never even been to America. So Have I've you not? I've never in my life. You're quite a well-travelled lad as well. Yeah, I'm surprised he's not. Never I, had time. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, you know, I've not really got anything pearls of wisdom to give you. I've been there three times. You know, what I mean, I'm not exactly. <laughs> The expert. <laughs> it's all right. It's good. Yeah, it's good there you go. go. Good to go watch United. Over yeah, there, it's good. Yeah, San Diego. Last, where when when like, everywhere we went last time. I mean, the fans were great everywhere. Went New Jersey. We was in New York for a bit. But my favourite place to sort of just as a place, not necessarily the people, just the place was San Diego. Right. It's really good. San Diego. It's weird because it's a bit like it's very Spanish, obviously, and it 
parts of it feel a bit more relaxed, a bit mm. more chilled. Mm. But yeah, it was really good. But yeah, if you can get over there and you're over there, come and say hello. Uh, Stephanie Griffith says, big up, Jay and Gaz. Uh, Ludu7 says, bring back Van Gaal for this one. Van, Van Gaal had a good record, didn't he, against the Scousers? Uh, Akbar Mia says, hello, Jay. How was your 5 a.m. walk? Laughing emoji. I don't know what, what that's about. Someone following you about? I do get, I don't, I don't think I, I mean, I was up at 5 a.m., but that was in my house, so I was eating all that. <laughs> Parked up outside, <laughs> got the bins out. That's really disconcerting. Um, right, let's get into some uh, news stories. Anyway, as you can see, we've got a picture of Mason Greenwood there, and I think that's Gladys and Bremer as well. So we're going to get into that. But before we do, we've got other stories to get into. Make sure you are hitting like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel if you're not doing. We want to get to 750,000 subscribers by the end of the season. With your support, we can do it. Guys, this is where you shine here. Because you, you're, you're our resident top reader. I mean... Oh, let's have a look. What are we saying about the pun, I first mean, of all? Fergus, Sonny, Jim, Ratcliffe. Right. <sighs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I get it, yeah, because Ollie right, scares me, he gets annoyed if I don't like his puns. And he starts, like, basically calling me thick. You know, he does, <laughs> I did one right, he did a pun, right? He'd only been here about a week, and I didn't like it. And he went, you know, and then he started, like, I could hear him shouting to himself, like, mumbling, look, you don't, don't get it. <laughs> Right, I get this one. I don't think it needs the, the Ratcliffe in parentheses. Yeah, I think Fergus, Sonny, Jim works, yeah? I think you've kind of gone, you're all a bit stupid, so I'm going to explain it to you. Which for me, it's fair enough, I get it, because I am thick. But I think our viewers would have got it. Anyway, I digress. It's a, I'll give you a, I'll give you a six... Yeah, it would have been a seven if it weren't for the Ratcliffe. Right, go on. Well, according to reports, Jay, yeah. Sir Jim Ratcliffe is ready to pay a big fee to beat Arsenal in the race to sign Evan Ferguson. Right. Um, yeah. One of Ratcliffe's priorities is to overhaul their recruitment structure with several signings eyed ahead of the next season. If Man United can find a way around their financial fair play issues, they're expected to pursue a new striker and they'll be in linked with Ferguson, who is also reportedly being eyed by Arsenal. Despite being without a Premier League goal in 15 games, the 19-year-old has eight goal involvements in his 36 appearances this term across all competitions. That surprises me, that. Um, it has been previously suggested that Ferguson could cost as much as 100 mil, but journalist Ben Jacobs believes Man United are more likely to offer 70 to 80 million. That's there's, Football 365. There's a few things I want to ask you about this, right? First of all, do you, do you rate the kid, Evan Ferguson? Um, last season, yeah, it felt like that was his breakthrough, mm. didn't it? And it, mm. it felt like that summer United may have gone for him. I thought maybe if they couldn't get Harry Kane, they would have turned their attention to Evan Ferguson, which would have been a big gamble. And I was thinking not even too long ago, actually, I'm glad we didn't take that gamble because maybe he's a bit stalled in his progression a little mm. bit. I've not heard much from the guy this season. That's why, I'll be honest, that start um, really does surprise me. Eight goal involvements in his 36 appearances this term. I've not heard much of the guy. No, he scored. Was it a hat-trick against um, Newcastle? Yes, I'm just looking here now. It's written down. Um, obviously, very talented youngster. The, the, I, like, I like Ferguson. I think he's a good player. Mm. I think when you look at the fact he's gone 15 games without a goal, that's not a be-all and end-all for a youngster. Rasmus Hoyland did something similar. I know it was different Good for him point. because he's coming into the Premier League, but he went a, a long time in the Premier League without a goal, and I wouldn't have said he was a bad player. He was just going through it. Obviously, when you're a youngster, you're still developing, and there's every chance next season he could bang in 20 goals. The question is, are we going to be able to get him for a price that makes sense? Because for me, he's still going to be a backup striker. He's not going to be first choice. I don't see him coming into the United team and Rasmus Hoyle and dropping to the bench. I don't. I don't. I, I maybe I, don't look at it that way though. Go on, I maybe talk look to at me. it as not 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 as a case of him being a backup striker, but in different games if you need a different sort of player, then Evan Ferguson comes in. Right. We've had injury problems, haven't we, all season? I mean, you know, maybe there's going to be some games where we play two up top. I, mean, I, I, I nice. would love it if we went back to the days of two four, up top. Four two. Let's do it. Well, I, I don't know if that if that happens. Then yeah, that makes sense to me. But the thing is, if you are going to get another striker, and obviously you're either going to get mm. a youngster or someone who's probably past the prime. I don't see you getting, I don't think we'll get an Ivan Toner, who's 28, who is going to want to play every game. He, he might rotate. Mm. Ivan Toner isn't. No, Ivan Toner's not going to go, oh, what is it, United Spurs, he's dropping me for this one. Yeah, no worries, Gaffer. He's not going to have any of that. So this kind of makes sense. But 70 million, okay. Anything above that is too much. My issue with it is, right, when, we, when you're paying that much for it, Look, it could be a brilliant player. He could be. Well, that's the key word, could. Yeah. Do I think he's proved enough to prove that this guy's going to be a world-class striker, which is what you should be paying £70 million for, someone mm. who's going to be a world-class striker? 
Now, you think back to the days of, you know, for example, when we signed Wayne Rooney, he'd had Euro 2004, he, yeah. he'd, had, he'd, had all, he'd already that done That goal it. against Arsenal when he was 16. Everyone knew it. You just yeah. watched him, you were like, there's no way this guy doesn't become no. one of the best in the world. So you'd be happy with United paying anything. Do I think he's quite proven that he's worth that? No. But, I tell you what, if we pay it, and he turns out to have a season at United, almost similar to Rasmus Hoyland this season, because I've been dead impressed with Rasmus no, Hoyland. I have. Then... I'd be happy with it, yeah. Yeah, let us know in the chat in the comments what do you think about Ferguson. Like you said, Gaz, it's gone a little bit cold, hasn't it? Like a few months ago, he was the hot property. Everyone mm. was on about him. He was linked with United. He was linked with Arsenal. Everyone was going, oh, he's got, you know, Evan Ferguson's going to be the next big thing. And there was, like you say, a £100 million price tag put in there. Uh, just before we move on as well, uh, Witterbird, Vicky is in the <coughs> chat. She's gifted five Paddock memberships. Thank you, Vicky. You've done this quite a lot over the last year or so. I uh, really do appreciate it. We've been, you know, without these, um, without our members, we'd... Um, we, we struggle as what a channel. What you get for a Paddock membership? You get extra content, you get discount on merch, you get all sorts. So oh we have man. like a little pa uh, member se section where we do like, we do a bit more random videos as well. We'll do stuff like football related, football, 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 but then you'll do stuff like a little bit more like quirky, like fo top five football films, stuff like that. So it's oh a little man. bit different, a little bit more, you know, personality based. We've done like a behind the scenes stuff as well where we just filmed what's been going on, you know, Steven Allison's doing some stuff and, you know, Rio was here and all that sort of stuff. So it's, there's a little bit extra there. Videos of you getting your hair cut. Yeah, that sort of stuff. <laughs> hey, all right, go on, you can fucking go now. All right, hey. Went viral, did we? Go on, <laughs> sod off. <laughs> Didn't even like your commentary anyway, rubbish. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Ollie Jensen says, Ferguson, miles better than Hoyland. I don't know about that one. Um, Oh yeah, Vicky says, don't forget the Fantasy Premier League that I'm low at. My, I, we used to do Fantasy Premier League every week. We stopped doing it because me and Joe have stopped doing our teams properly. Yeah, same. And it's a shambles now. I've not even looked. I, do you know what? I've probably still got Tom Cleverley in my midfield. I've not <laughs> looked at it for ages. So yeah, I've stopped doing that. Uh, Stephanie Griffey says, 99 likes. Good point. Let's get to 100 likes. Yeah, I like Ferguson. If we can get him 70 million, I'd be all right with that. I think we do need another option as a striker, like you said. Seems like a good young lad. He impresses me in interviews as well. He's a pretty level-headed lad. If we're going to be paying closer to 100 million, forget it. That's too much of a gamble, especially when we've got to balance the books with FFP. Because unlike some of us, we do actually balance our FFP books. Um, should we move on? Unless you've got anything else you want to say. I was going to say, uh, I think we should just sign him just because he's called Ferguson. Great point. Fergie That's returns. 100 mil, done. Um, right, go on. Okay. All right, we're going to talk about someone that I don't know here, aren't we? Well, we can do the pun first. You're bad, but I'm a nice guy. Uh, no. You're I'm bad, a, no, I'm but I'm a nice also, guy. Is that a sad face? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no one has put, no one has made a sad face like that since 2003. Right. Um, yeah. I like the pub, right? You're bad. I quite like that. Hey, But I'm a nice guy. Okay, yeah. It's, it, I'm with Gaz, though. Like, well, this is like my grandma messaging me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> How are you? Have you been eating? <laughs> uh, see, United, see United lost. This. Hey, this is what she'd put on the end of a message if she was still alive. Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah. All right, babe. I feel like you've done, again, this is better than the first one, so I'm going to give it a seven, but it would have been an eight if you didn't concede that late goal yeah. at the end there. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, right, go on, you can talk Appar for this. Well, well, apparently United are in talks over signing the Nice defender as new transfer priority emerges. In contact with Melvin Bard as the club focuses on signing a new left-back this summer. 23 years old, being discussed as one of the club's targets to bolster their squad. Um, he's already playing, of course, under Sir Jim Ratcliffe's Ineos ownership in France. Uh, Bard's an attacking left-sided option. He's excelled in Ligue 1 this season and is pushing for his maiden France call-up ahead of Euro 2024 this summer. Move to Old Trafford could benefit both Ineos-related clubs. Uh, Bard has just two years left on his current contract and talks are expected over a new improved deal in the coming months. That's the standard. could say this is much ado about nothing. If you know, you know. Um, I mean, I don't know a lot about this kid. We're always going to be linked with Nice players because of the Sir Jim Ratcliffe connection. We do need a left back, don't we? Don't we? What's happening with Malassia? Come is on, you're dead? ICK. Is he dead? I don't know. I, don't, I mean, he's obviously alive, <laughs> isn't he? Like, let's just pull that out there before we get clipped up. Like, <laughs> Malassia. Like, like, yeah, we go viral dead. for the wrong reasons. Like, <coughs> Cyril Malassia is alive and well, he's just not fit enough to play for Manchester United Football Club. But he's got injury issues. 
Luke Shaw's got injury issues. Luke mm. Shaw's played 50% of the games in the last five years. So, so yeah. Is that right? Is that's it? right. I've not just made that up. That's true because I know it because we keep talking about it. Jeez. So he's not someone you can rely on. <clears throat> this kid could be the answer. He looks like... Just, he looks like really? a City fan to me. I know exactly what you mean. Do you know what I mean? Like that. Yeah, you could imagine yeah, him. Yeah, I can imagine. like one of them laser blue kappa kits. Yeah, yeah. he just looks like that sort of look about Jeans him. that don't fit him yeah, properly, yeah, scruffy trainers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Most of them. Ben shit him and shirt and that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yes, the old ones are the best ones. <laughs> hey, um, listen, I'm not going to stand here and do some ham-fisted scout report on a player I don't know a lot about. <laughs> um, but if he is any good, and he may well be, then I'd happily have him if we can get a deal because it's a Jim Ratcliffe, especially he's only got two years left on his current contract, which is kind of that time when you can get a player for not too extortionate, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, can I just say, like, like I, I, I'm same boat as you here, never seen this guy play, can't tell you how good he is or how bad he is. Well, I remember when United used to do this. They'd go and buy some left-back from Nice and you'd be like, who's this? Maybe it takes about a month, two months to settle, thinking, what's Fergie done here? And all of a sudden... Wow, Min. Vidic, great example. Vidic, when Vidic comes in, I was like, who's this guy? He's like my, yeah. one of my favourite ever United players, yeah, Vidic. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Ever to a lesser extent, cause I think ever, uh, did he get to this Champions League semi or the final or something before he came to United? Yeah. But ever was a similar one where he came in and I was just a bit like, don't know much about this guy and then it turns out to be Min. Um, someone says, remember seeing Gaz on Deansgate years ago? Doing a referendum, Vox Pops. Yeah. 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 yeah all right. That was, um, that was, God, what was that, Giggs? Yeah. G- sorry, yeah. Giggs referendum. It was Giggs referendum, yeah. yeah. So it was when uh, Giggs was the manager for a little bit. Right. And we, it was around the time of Brexit. Right. So we were going around with a big board that said, in or out. And then we put in tiny writing underneath it, Giggs. <laughs> I used to love stuff like that. Devils used to love stuff people, like that. People going past like, out. <laughs> Shut the borders. <laughs> Take back control. <laughs> what? What are you on about? <laughs> He's Welsh. <Yeah. laughs> That's class. Things you used to get away with. Uh, you can't do anything now. It's all gone. Game's gone. Um, too woke. Yeah, too woke. 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 Wokeism's gone. <laughs> hey, can't even get sc- scones nowadays. Um, Stephen Harris says his name is Melvin. End of scout report. Thank you. Thank you for that. Well done. Um, listen, if we get him, great. If we don't, life goes on. It's not like the end of the world. I think the main thing about that was that pun started off so well and then ended quite badly. Uh, have we got another one for us? Jesus wept. What's this say? I'm not even going to try it. In, 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 well, go on. I can see him getting annoyed Explain already. It. He's saying it. just read the rest. <laughs> right. Manchester right. United launch internal investigation as crisis worsens under Eric right, So it's obviously the injury problem, isn't it? And you've just crowbarred half of the word injury yeah. into two words. You could have gone with investigation, and I would have loved you forever. Um, because any office reference on this show gets oh, 10 out of 10. Um, but this one, I mean... Ollie, you're doing a great job, right? For a scouser, you're very, you're, you're all right. But I'm going to be polite and say, this isn't your best work. <laughs> yeah? You're capable, you ca- as my teachers used to say to me, you're capable of much more. Yeah? And I've seen much better from you. <laughs> so we're probably going to get much better from you in the future. Yeah? <laughs> Good lad. Um, it's a very scouse haircut, isn't it, as well? Well, he's, he's when I say scouse, he's a Liverpool fan. He's about as scouts as I am. In fact, he's less scouts than I am. I live closer to Liverpool than <laughs> he, he does. <laughs> but he's a Liverpool fan. <laughs> um, right, well, on. Jay, you'll never guess what. Go Eric on. Ten Hag has said that the club is going to launch an internal investigation in order to get to the bottom of the side's crippling injury problems. He spoke about the club's issues on Wednesday ahead of the game uh, against Chelsea. He said, we have an idea, but we will work on that internally and deal with it. Uh, that's what he's explained. The crisis is predominantly in defence which uh, was, of course, worsened at the weekend in that draw against Brentford. Martinez, Lindelof, now ruled out for a month. So that's Luke Shaw, Tyrell Molassia, uh, joining, joined by Martinez and Lindelof as defensive casualties on the sidelines. That's Sport Bible. Um, I, I don't get this in The only reason that Sport Bible are making the cut here, by the way, because it's quotes in it and we know that this is real. Right. Um, but I, I don't get, like... Um, 
the injury problem at Man United. Like, I'm not an expert in terms of, like, fitness of these high-level athletes. All you hear are whispers about how intense training is under Eric Ten Hag. And it's quite funny because when, like, when we weren't playing well in the early days of Ten Hag, people would hear about the training being really intense. Be like, yeah, give yeah. it to give it yeah. Eric. They deserve it. Make them work hard. Make them run 10K in training. But they're all getting injured because of it. Is it a good thing? Is it Ten Hag's fault? Is it the medical staff's fault? Yeah, really I good. don't These know. are really good questions. And it's the one thing that annoyed me a little bit with the Mayonnaise one is I just feel like it, it, it did feel a little bit weird what's going on with Martinez. Like, he obviously had that injury, which I don't blame... I don't blame him or the club or anyone for getting that injury against West Ham when the player fell on him. Because mm. that was just a freak. Yeah, it was freakish. nothing to do with the then previous injury. He goes it? away with Argentina as part of his rehabilitation, which... I, okay, yeah, if you want, but did he really need to go with mm. United? Can we not keep that in-house? Why do we you know, lead him to go to Argentina, away with them, to train with them when he could do that in Carrington. I'm not sure that really got that one, but again, you sort of have a, a little bit of trust in the, the club and the medical department. There's a reason for it. Then he came back. Then in the Brentford game, he came on. And I love Lissandro Martin as well. He's one of my favourite players. But he was woeful. He was. In that Brentford game, he came on, he gave the ball away, he looked off the pace. He didn't look right. He didn't look great. Kambala was there, he's, who has not played a lot, but played, you know, in don't the last know. eight weeks, he's not he's been done, injured. Done all right when yeah, you, you, you could have brought him on, but you went with Martinez, and then a couple of days later, he's injured. Mm. And it just all seems a bit odd. The entire sort of last month of him going with Argentina, him being brought on against Brentford when he didn't look right, then he gets injured in training. It just all feels a bit odd it to me. It feels odd, but I also, like like I said before, like I don't actually know what the issue is. No. Like it might... It, 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 Maybe he's just an injury-prone player. You know, may, may, maybe, hey, maybe we've just been unlucky. Yeah, no, there is, there there is, is that. that you know? I always say, like, people don't like to mention the word luck in football, yeah. but it exists. But I know, I know that Ten Hag has said that we've, you know, we've been unlucky, and I don't, the reason why I don't accept that as an excuse when he says we've been unlucky with injuries, otherwise we'd be higher in the table. I know he said that recently. Yeah. It's because I think we've actually been very lucky in certain games this season on our performances. Brentford, we were lucky to get a point, and we scored in the bloody 95th minute. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. We, we, we were lucky against Wolves both times against Wolves, home, the home and away. Um, we, we were lucky, I think, to get a draw against Liverpool at Anfield, just the way that we played and the amount of shots we conceded. So I'm not, if, if luck comes into it, I actually think United have been luckier than we have been unlucky. But yeah. I don't know. No, I, um, I agree. Sam Knox makes a good point. He said, Martin has missed just 12 games for Ajax. Mad. Why, why, is, is, it, is it just the intensity of the Premier League, the intensity of training? In, like at United, but it's the same manager as well for starters. I mean, I don't know. It's, you just you don't know. It just looks. It all just feels a little bit strange to me. That's all. The, everyone the, just what's going on? Everyone just wants someone to blame, don't they? And I get yeah, that. Yeah. And I, I, the thing is, I just don't know who to blame. No, I don't. It's I mean, annoying me, but yeah, it is. It is frustrating because Martinez is one of our most, if not our most important player under Eric Ten Hag, and we've basically not had him all season. Because yeah. the beginning of the season he didn't look right, did he? Yeah. Like that Wolves game. He was. He was that. He, I mean. The lad is at Cunha was tearing him yeah, apart, yeah, like yeah, he, yeah. you know, he made him look like Prime Maradona, and it was like, hang on a minute, this isn't the Martinez we know and love. Then obviously he was at the Arsenal game, gets injured, in, comes back, gets a freak, a freak accident injury against West Ham, and now he's out till what May? I mean, that's the season done, isn't it? Are you gonna? Do you bring him back if he's fit for the Arsenal game? Do you bring him back for that one? I think that's third Not May. in the league. And then, nah, and then, and then you've got. If you have, if you get to the final, then you've got the FA Cup final. It'd be so. nice, be nice to have him in the semi, wouldn't it, in the final? But yes, it would. Um, anyway, cue dramatic music, public service announcement. It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's the most revolutionary ball trimmer the world has ever seen. Yes, gentlemen, our friends over at Manscapes, they dare to dream, right? Some people think there's nowhere else we can go. We've reached the top, the limit, the mm. ceiling of below the waist grooming technology, mm. Manscaped say, shut up. We can go even further. Wow. 4.0, don't get out of bed for a 4.0 anymore. We're talking about your 5.0, ultra 5.0, and free shipping, and 20% off, yeah? You get all that using the code DEVILS20 with the link in the description here, because Manscaped have dared to dream. They have brought you the performance package, ultra 5.0. Now I know what you're thinking, guys. You're like, Jay, yeah, great. 
they've done this. It's a nice, you know, we're moving forward. Technology and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. I yeah, I hear this all the time. Yeah, like, but I'm, I'm the man who's setting my ways. I don't like change. Well, don't mm. worry, yeah? You've got crop preserver. You've got your crop toner. You've got all the stuff that you've had before. The ball toner, sorry. The crop preserver. The shed travel bag. The box of briefs. You've got the weed whacker. Yeah, you might not be there yet. But when you get to my age, your nose and your ear hair, uh -huh. it, it's an issue, bro. It's one of those things that can let you down. That's why you've got the weed whacker to sort that out, right? So you don't have to stand in the bathroom with your torch on your phone and all that, and you, you know, in your mouth and your knives and forks or whatever it is you use. Yeah, that, no, that, you know that always worries me. Yeah, you don't need to do that just, because just, you've what, got. What, like, what if I accidentally hit live stream? <laughs> that genu that's genuinely one of my worries. I'm actually on Facebook and all your family. The money you'll that. make, you can get yourself a manscaped. Yeah, <laughs> that's what happens. Yeah, the money you'll make from that live stream from all them super chats. Uh, well, you can get day, yourself. No one wants an old school 70s bush, do they? It's 2024. Get, get with a program. Shave your balls. Shave your balls using Manscaped. You've got everything you want there. You've got the Preserver Ball Deodorant, the Crop Suva Toner, two free gifts, the Weed Whacker 2.0. You've got the Ultra 5.0, the biggest advancement in below the waist grooming technology. You've got 20% off. You've got free shipping. Use the code DEVILS20. Link in the description. Your balls will thank you. And a big thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this podcast. Your balls will look like JZ. Yeah. <laughs> what more could you ask for? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's just what you want to think about when you're thinking your balls. Um, <laughs> my head. Right. Let's move off injured turnal yes. injurious. <clears throat> oh wow. Speaking of, oh, uh, <laughs> great segue. Old lady loses her Brazilian. I love this. You've, right. redeemed, you've fully redeemed yourself. Yeah, that was good. Fully, really simplistic, really effective good. and funny. Really yeah, that's good. what I want from a pun. Yeah? Ticks all my boxes. Uh, how do I pronounce his name? Gleason Bremer. Why not? Yeah. United continue to scout Juventus defender Gleason Bremer. Uh, this scored in Sky Germany. United showing an interest in signing him. Uh, he's a centre-back. He's been linked with a move to Old Trafford ever since the January transfer window. And the rumours are continuing to swirl in the final weeks of the season. Uh, it's been claimed that Bremer is a player who has been scouted by United ahead of the summer window with a reported valuation of between oh. 50, 60 million euros. Um, We've lost. There we go. We've got it on there. So, We've got it on there. Oh, there it's oh, back again. Back. There okay. we go. Did someone press the wrong button or was it? It's, glitch. it's like Anchorman. If, yeah, if, glitch. If, if it disappears, I literally just stay quiet. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, which, by the way, uh, is 42.8 million to 51.4 million. Uh, however, <laughs> however, it has been stated that despite the interest, there have been no advanced talks over a deal to bring Bremer to Old Trafford. The reporting asking price is reportedly an issue. Right, can I just say someone in the, super, in the chat, sorry, yeah. Yomi Nelson says, I don't get it. Juve are called the old lady. That's yeah. their nickname. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Bremer is Brazilian. Yeah. yeah? Just but maybe save, they don't save know. Save all this shouting at you. Because even I got that one. Maybe they don't know what a Brazilian is, as in a Brazilian. Yeah, a Brazilian is when you have. Look it up online. Yeah. Y you'll yeah. be there. You'll Google be there for Brazilian <laughs> shaves. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, we were linked with this lad. Right. Yeah. I am proper, simple, and basic me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah? in my arguments, in my life, in my thoughts. And I don't know a lot about this lad. But we were talking about him the other day, and one thing I sort of, in my infinite wisdom, looked at was the fact that he's 20... How old is he? He's 27. Mm. Um, great age. He's great age. I was just like, I was a bit like, okay, what's going on then? Usually you've heard of him, but young, most defenders who come to a United or a league with a, a sort of a move to the Premier League in the early 20s. Is 27 the right age to be getting someone from, from the Italian league? I mean, obviously Juve are a huge club, but people were getting in the chat and going, no, no, he's great, I've watched him, he's, he's, he's a really good player. So he seems to have a lot of, a lot of fans. Um, I think the, the one of the other sort of queries I had was about his, his, I think he's only got a few caps for Brazil. But again, like, who's the Brazilian centre-backs? Is it still Gabriel and, I don't know, Sorry? Marquinhos, yeah. Marquinhos, so wow. it's it's not like you can't look too much into that as well. So I think you have to sort of see to people who've watched more of him than obviously I have and the, the sort of the, the most of the, the feedback I was getting, and by all means get involved in the chat in the comments and let me know, was that this is a very good player. Yeah. And there's someone who could come in and do a well, job at Old Trafford. It, it's nice to be linked to players that aren't from Ten Hag's contact book. Like pretty much yeah. everyone we've signed, you know, in 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 the first window in particular with 
you know, just players that Ten Hag has played with before. Yeah. So, you know, the fact that we're being linked with players that have nothing to do with Eric Ten Hag, someone's going to tell me now that you spent two seasons at Ajax. Remember like Ten Mason Hag, Mount? And you were like, Mason Mount? Oh, yeah, it's fair enough. Yeah. Like what you saw at Chelsea? No, no, Vita Zan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he's not done it in the Eredivisie, yeah. he's not good enough for United, right? right? You know what I mean? Um, so, look, I don't know. It, it depends how United scouting network works this summer. I just hope it's a bit more intense than it has been in the past because it certainly needs to be. Um, we need centre-backs, don't we? Um, you look at our centre-backs. Uh, if Maguire's happy to play as a third-choice centre-back, I think he's great to have as a third-choice centre-back. Lindelof, I just, I'm not. I've, no, I've, I've fought no, this for years. I'm no, just not having him now. No. I'm really not. Luke Shaw can fill in at centre back, but what's the point? Because he's always injured. Um, we, 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 need, we need options there. We really, really do. And let's face it, Rafael Varane probably won't be at United next season. And uh, do I even want him to be at United next season? Do I think he's been that good? Maybe not. So we need someone to come in now and impress us. So annoying how unlucky we've been with injuries in defence. Like. It's not just you, like you say, it's not just missing the first two centre backs half the time. It's like Johnny Evans comes in, does a good job, and then he's injured. Mm-hmm. Like Aaron Maguire comes in and does a, jo- a good job, he wins player of the month in November, then he gets injured. It's like everyone keeps getting injured, and then you're left with, and I'm with you on the Lindelof thing, I just don't think he's at level. I think he's not. I think mean, Johnny Evans is better than him. I, oh, I, I completely which agree. Is, which, I, I, well, he's certainly played better than him this yeah, season. 100%. Um, I honestly think that when signing Johnny Evans, I, I don't think he was meant to play like more than. Five ten games for the club, yeah. and he's, he's played loads. No, nah, he's done really well. He's done really well. Yeah, bumped, so we bumped into him in uh, American Stay in uh, and Colo were chatting to him. And he seemed a bit like didn't really know what was going on. He's like, you know, the club just asked me to come in, and it was like happy day sort of thing. Um, and then he's ended up staying. Um, Vicky says, "Don't say that about Varane. I think he's a big Varane fan um, for various reasons." Yeah, listen, I love Varane. We'll have to wait and see. What do you mean for various reasons? I think she likes his footballing ability and she finds him attractive as well. He's, I think. A, handsome, he's, from, handsome. From, he's a very handsome he's man, isn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just following on from this, someone's mentioned about Mason Greenwood being a potential swap deal, which brings us on to our next story. That's a good idea. Um, Mason Greenwood, Italian green light. Um, Juve have been, uh, sorry, Juve have heavily interested <laughs> what? One job! One what? job! Right, there's only one thing I ever really get annoyed about on this channel and it's grammatical errors yeah what what the hell is this <laughs> Juventus have heavily interested in Greenwood I mean Bremer interest from United that will make sense doesn't read very well does it eh let's try a little bit harder next time thank you I think they're doing it on purpose to make you sound like an idiot do you know what they stitched us up once when they used the wrong picture on I purpose? I thought that was brilliant. I know, that was I know. my favourite thing on this channel in a yeah, long time. Yeah, honestly, it was horrible. Mm. Yeah, mm. Seriously. Um, yeah, go on, I'll let you. Uh, Daniel Longo reports that the old lady are getting serious about signing the 22 year old, according to the journalist Juve. I've been discussing Greenwood in recent years, but finally serious about acquiring him. Uh, especially seeing as he is set to leave Old Trafford in the summer. United finally ready to completely cut ties with the disgraced striker after loaning him out. And as of now, Juve are in prime position to acquire him. The likelihood of this deal going through is further increased by the fact that United themselves are also highly after a Juve player in defender Gleason Bremer. And a player swap plus cash deal seems very likely. Yeah, we could end up with a scenario where that happens. I think, I've said this a little while now, we all know the reasons why Mason Greenwood doesn't play for Manchester United. It's not about his ability. He's a talented young man. It's just obviously off the field issues have led to him being loaned out to Getafe. I, I, I mean, I don't know, but it doesn't seem like there's a strong desire to bring him back. I think they tried to bring him back into the team. They had a massive backlash and he's got cold feet. Um, so Jim Ratcliffe kind of sat on the fence when he was asked about it. He didn't really give any indication one way or the other. Well, but, that's not what everyone online told me. Well, Everyone online told me that you know he could, Jim Ratcliffe basically said Greenwood's coming back and he's going to be our starting it, striker next season, yeah. which he didn't. That's just because it's what you wanted. To yeah, hear. if you want to hear and, something, and, and, like he, he basically yeah. didn't say anything. No, he said we have to look at the values of the club. Blah de, blah de, blah. You can interpret that as the fact he's mentioning values. Does that right. mean he's not going to bring him back? We don't know, but personally, just whether it's a gut feeling, whatever, I get the impression he ain't coming back to United. He's not. That's my impression, he's and I've said that for a little while. I think if we are going to move him on. And if you're very interested in him, if we want one of their defenders, this makes sense. Yeah. It does, regardless of what the, the reason behind it, it's a very sad way that Mason Green will end up leaving his club because there was a time when I looked at Mason Greenwood and actually thought, God, when he burst into, onto the scene, 
he was going to be at United for the next sort of 15 years and break all these records. Obviously, for the reasons we've already mentioned, that didn't happen. Uh, oh, Hanlon86 has been a member of the first team in 15 months. Says, actually, Jay, there's no ball toner in, ball, oh, no ball toner in the new set. My balls are untoned. Well, we'll sort that out. Don't worry about that. I'll leave that with me. Well, you're going to personally sort that out, yeah? Yeah, all right. Yeah, it's the service you get on Stratford Paddock, yeah? Right? Don't worry about that. What you, you get for your paddock membership. Yeah. <laughs> if JJ comes around your gaff and fondles your balls. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think um, we'll move on from there. In fact, I think we're done, actually, my brother. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Hey, we wrap it up there. So we might end up with Evan Ferguson. We might end up with Gleason Bremer. We might end up with seeing Mason Greenwood depart in the club. Um, in the morning, we're going to be previewing the Chelsea game. So make sure you are hitting like, share and subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Also, go and check out Manscaped Sponsoring in this podcast. Gaz, Talk to me, bro. Where can people find you? What are you up to? So we do a football phone-in on BBC Radio Manchester. If you get the BBC Sounds app, you can listen to it from wherever. Uh, we're on six until seven, mainly discussing Man United and Man City, but plenty of sport across Manchester as well. And uh, if you ever want to hear that, that sort of commentary again where I lose my head, um, we do have full match commentary when Man United, for example, will play in the FA Cup semi-final against Coventry. So you can listen to us doing the commentary there on Radio Manchester. Uh, and I do do updates as well on Radio Manchester. Um, also, the Devil's Advocate podcast, with me and Joe McGrath, who's on the channel. Have a listen to that. Yeah, do, and you like you don't have to be from Manchester to get involved in, do you? Of course you? not. Like, yeah, no you way. Can, the joys of modern technology, you can bring in from anywhere. Uh, just before it goes, well, FPA, FPL, Mikel, sorry, I might have missed your super chat, says, it's been reported today that part of the injury problem is no fitness coach, despite Eric Tanag wanting one, hashtag Glazernomics. Yeah, the Glazers effect still being That's felt. My favourite thing about us, like all these staff we're meant to be bringing in, yeah. It's like, they're not replacing anyone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's oh, mad, isn't it? Oh. It's, like... It's, like the new, it's like a new role. And you think you think we were in the 1970s. Yeah. It's like, what's your role at United? Oh, I'm a director of football. What? Yes. We haven't got one of them? No. Well, well who does the manager report so? Oh, he reports to the owner. Yeah, what? I mean, uh, yeah. How does that work? And they love football. Yeah, they? yeah. They, 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 they'll give you a quick decision. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you to everyone who got involved in the chat and the comments. Thank you to Dave Briscoe and to Witterbird as well for sharing loads of Paddock memberships. Uh, that's been Gaz String I've been Jay Moy. This has been Paddock Live. Don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.